today through the worst of the blisters I think we're starting off in Longwood with 115 children I think that's going to be really spectacular it'll be almost like looking at uh, the sum of our 1490 or a small portion of that so that's going to be really special uh, Enfield all is special Betty Carey and her team have been out from 2015 the first walk and um, so I know they're going to be here with an amazing welcome for us so really looking forward to that then we're going on through Kilcock where we're stopping for lunch and meeting some of the local there and then ending up this evening in Maynooth so we are on our second last day of an amazing journey with amazing people and meeting amazing people particularly and we thank the old Piper. Where is our Piper gone? Mary Faulkner and, we, and you're going to sing for us now, are you? Yeah. Yes. Is Mr. McKee with you? And Master McKee is Ambassador McKee, we welcome particularly uh, Eamon McKee, the Irish Ambassador to Canada. And we welcome particularly all the work that's been done between Strokestown and Canada. And uh, so I'll not delay you because it's been a long walk. And of course, you all know Caroline Cleary, who herself and her father set up the museum in Strokestown and we're happy to support them and we feel it's our duty to remember and honour 
there's nothing we can do for the people that walked here in 1847 except to remember them and honour them and keep their memory alive and wish all their people well. Now, thank you. So Daniel Tai's story is one that's surrounded with heartbreaking grief, loss, hunger and displacement. So some of you have touched upon that uh, story in, in the talk that we had in your school over a week ago. So I just wanted to um, highlight some of the words that our beloved president Michael Dean uh, spoke when he was speaking about those that have been displaced for whatever reason and who may have sought Ireland as refuge. So he referred to them as our new Irish. And just as it was for Daniel Ty, a boy of about your age, and his sister, Catherine, they became the new Canadians. So as we're about to begin this journey together, we're going to remember from a place of heart that some of those that were on that journey. And here this shawl carries the, the names of the missing 1,490. So we're going to remember them today by ceremoniously folding the shawl and then we're going to carry their memory with us on the rest of this journey. So um, let's just take a moment for the students to, to fold this. so much for participating in this part of the, the National Famine Way. As you know, it's marked by bronze shoes, over 30 of these, cast from children's shoes found in a cottage in the thatched roof and bound together. We can imagine that that's a symbol of uh, perhaps their ties to home, that no matter how far they traveled, uh, they were still bound to home. And they traveled very far. Uh, when they got, uh, and I'm grateful you can come with us a part of the route but when they got to Dublin it was only the start of their journey across to Liverpool and then across to Canada and the 1490 mainly women and children uh, showed great courage in undertaking that journey to a new world to start a new life and while many of them died 
vast majority of them actually lived and it's an indication of their resilience. But when they got to Canada, they were met with great compassion as well. Um, we now know, thanks to Professor Mark McGowan's research, that upwards of 80 Canadians died helping the Irish because they caught typhus and cholera and other things from them. And we also know that the indigenous of Canada did, fund did fundraising for them. Even though they were very poor, some of them were affected by blight. And um, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat people in 1847 collected funds for the Irish to help. And that's a, a newly discovered story. Thanks again to, to Mark McGowan and Jason King here, the historian at the, at the National Famine Museum. But this journey is only a part of it because um, the millions who left Ireland journey very far. And we're now extending the National Famine Way as the Global Irish Famine Way. And it will be the largest heritage trail in the world because these shoes will be in Canada, they'll be in the US, possibly Argentina, South Africa, and in Australia as well. Um, and that will connect all of the people around the world who are descended from Irish immigrants and famine immigrants. And we know, we know that there are 70 million people worldwide uh, who are part of the Irish diaspora. And it show, it's a testament to the Irish and their, their resilience that they created new lives and hugely influenced the countries that were in. And they became doctors, nurses, politicians, soldiers and statesmen and business people and writers and uh, affected those countries in which they all lived in a very, very positive way. So I want to thank you for participating in this small piece of a really epic Irish story. And uh, I'll be happy to hand these to someone who wants to carry them. Beware, use both hands and you might share them around so you can, yeah. yeah. And in fact, two weeks ago, we brought 15 of those shoes over on the Celtic Explorer and they were distributed from Newfoundland to Quebec, Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, uh, Kingston, Niagara. And they will be the first places where we have the bronze shoes as part of the Global Irish Famine Way. And I'd like to add to Betty's tribute to Jim Callery and to Carolyn Callery, because when you say one million people died and one million people emigrated and another three million emigrated, it's hard to capture what that means. But what Carolyn has done and the National Famine Museum has done in trying to trace the 1,490 is they put uh, names and faces and stories, particularly the story of Daniel Tyke, to that story. Um, and I'd like to ask Carolyn now to say a few words. very welcome here today thank you very much lovely to see all the school children it's, it's important you can learn in many ways and learning as walking in the footsteps of, of part of a historical event is, is a lovely way and an embodied way to learn uh, I, have, I have very little to say because I think it's mostly been said but I have to say from the first walk in 2015 when it was meant to be just a once off um, and I contacted Betty Carey and her team we've always had the most fantastic welcome in Enfield um, I've stayed in contact with Betty over the years she'll always ring me and say where's our shoes in the beginning because you, your shoes came a bit after the others the shoes aren't here yet uh, our, our, you were down at the Famine Summer School last year and I know the team and your husband and the historical group we met with when we we're doing the, the research and we've had the school here and you have the famine pot uh, down in the middle of the village and we, that was where we were last time um, and hopefully maybe there next time so Betty you've been absolutely fantastic here um, uh, over the years and, and we've really grown to be friends to be honest yeah. with you um, and wonderful that the councils this year actually gave us funding and they've been so supportive. So we got funding for workshops in the school, so it meant Amory can go out before or after and you know, so the children understand a little bit about the story before they arrive here. So thank you very much for coming um, and it's been wonderful. And the Piper, that was just amazing. I yes. think we're going to bring you to Dublin. Yeah. You're kidnapped. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much. And I think, um, you have Rosemary. Yes, it's yeah. a kind of a tradition that started yeah. here. Yeah. That you sing the old bog road and we have a video yes. of it every time. Yeah. So we're not yeah. going until we get the old bog road out of the airfield. Please join, sing it with me if you know it. Yeah. I believe here on Broadway this blessed harvest morn and oh the ache that's in them for the spot where I was born. My weary hands are blistered from work.
dark and cold and heat And oh, to swing a scythe again Through fields of Irish wheat But I a chance to wander back For all the kings of old To soon I'd see the hawthorn tree On the old The died last springtime when Aaron's fields were green. The neighbors said the wake it was the finest ever seen. There were cowslips and primroses piled high about her bed. And Fern's church was crowded as the funeral mass was said. But here was I. They carried out a coffin on the old barn road. The last verse. <laughs> Life's a weary puzzle, past finding out by man. I'll go take the day for what it's worth and do the best I can. Oh, no one cares a straw for me, whether I make or mow. I'll go my way and draw my pay and smoke my pipe alone. Each human heart must know some grief, though bitter be its load. So God be with you last week and to the organisers for including us in this event today. So thanks very much and good luck with the rest of your journey.